hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime king and today i'm going to be giving you part 48 of what if kurama gave naruto a dojutsu remember to get this one to 100 like as usual share this to all of your friends on your social media platform and also go ahead and check out a new episode of what if Tsunade was naruto's mother i post a new episode of that so go ahead and enjoy and also guys, stay in tune because over in Anime King 2 tonight, I'm going to be posting What if Naruto had 9 Kiki Genkai? And also, what if Naruto had the Sharingan and the Byakugan mix? So stay in tune for that and enjoy. And remember guys, if you're new to either of these channels, go ahead and click that red subscribe button and join Anime King and Anime King 2 and become a part of the Anime King family. And thank you all for your support and help. And also go below and comment and tell me if you're new. And I'll be replying back to all of you. And guys, over on Anime King 2, I'll be starting a new episode because I finished Naruto, the God of Shinobi. So stay in tune for a new episode coming your way. But without further ado, let's get straight into this new episode. So the last time we left off, Naruto was named Hokage as the news quickly spread around the nation. As everyone was surprised that Tsunade gave up her mantle and Naruto became Hokage. The Mizukage also sent a letter to Konoha saying that she wants to meet Naruto. Back at Konoha, a clone was there as it was giving out mission to the people of Konoha. And the real Naruto was going on a trip to Ozu with his mother and foe. The clone quickly delivered the message to Naruto. Naruto then told the clone to set up the Hiroshin seal at the office when the Mizukage arrived and informed him. Then he would just teleport back to Konoha and speak to the Mizukage. Naruto also gave Sasuke's report on Itachi. As Naruto felt like something was up, Itachi was a kind warm person and he suddenly betrayed Konoha. So Naruto gave Sasuke the report to read about Itachi. Sasuke read into it as he asked Naruto if he could stay with this. So Naruto gave him a couple of days so he can read it over. So yeah guys, that was basically the last part we left off. You guys can switch across the playlist and check it out for yourself. So let's start this new episode. We start this episode at the Hokage Mansion as Naruto was currently going over some documents that the civilians want to build and open new shops. Naruto then looked up in the ceiling as he closed his eyes but he was interrupted when Shizune came into the room. Naruto, what are you doing? Please get back to work, Shizune said, as Naruto nodded with his eyes still closed. How are the preparations coming? He asked, as Shizune hold up a small notepad with a small nod. Their place have been assigned to them, and we are currently waiting for the Mizukage's arrival. Also, we have a mission request by the doctors at the hospital. They are saying that we are running low on supplies and we need to get some. I suggest that you send out a team. On that mission. Naruto opened his eyes as he nodded. Alright, I see what you mean. Is anyone still here? Shizune then gave my list with everyone that is here. This was just a supply mission, but Naruto made the C rank since if they run into any trouble. As he then spoke, tell me Shizune, what would you think if I changed the academy a little? Shizune tilted her head to the side as she was a bit confused. Is something wrong with the academy? She asked. As Naruto turned and looked out the window. As he then sighed, I just find it to be lacking in the shinobi department. I mean, looking back at the missions, I know we all had a lot to learn. Things that should have been in the academy. Someone told me that back in the day, the academy wasn't like this. In the time of war, the academy was strict and they taught the students everything. But nowadays, the teachers aren't teaching the students everything. Shizune placed her hand on her chin. And what is that? She asked him. Well, for one, I think they should start learning how to climb trees and walk on water. They didn't teach us that in the academy. And why the hell was there a flower arrangement seminar? Naruto asked. I am not sure, Naruto. I guess it was decided by the civilians for some reason, Shizune said. As Naruto hit his head on the decks with a thud. Why would they teach students about flowers in the academy? 
that made no sense. And why the hell are civilians making decisions? I am all for taking people's ideas. But what the hell, Narka asks, as she's only a gulp. Um, well, Saratobi was a Hokage back then, so why don't you ask him? Naruto shook his head as he placed his elbows on the table. Nah, Gigi's enjoying his retirement, so I won't bother him with that. Has anything else come up? Naruto asked. Shizune shook her head. Not at the moment. Now please, get the work done, she said, as Naruto sighed with a nod, as he then went back to his paperwork. As Shizune left the room, you know, if you all are going to stare at me the entire time, you might as well say something, Naruto said, to the anvils in the room. Ah, uh, forget you guys, as they didn't say anything. There was then another knock on the door. Naruto sighed in annoyance. Come on in, he said, as Sasuke entered the room. Sasuke handed Naruto a scroll, and Naruto took it. Naruto sighed as he looked at the document. As Sasuke was pissed, he then rushed up to Naruto and grabbed Naruto by the collar. As three anvils appear around Sasuke, pointing their swords at him, but Naruto waved his hands for them to disappear, and they did. How am I to accept this after I read this scroll? This is insane, said Sasuke. What am I supposed to do? I hate Itachi for killing my family, and now, my family was trying to take over Konoha? First of all, let me go, said Naruto. Sasuke did as Naruto went back into his seat as he picked up some more documents. I can't tell you what to do. Hell, when I learned about Itachi, I was skeptical also. But that is what the file said. Face it Sasuke, he's not the person that you thought he was. He wasn't a cold blooded killer. He was just your brother, following orders. So tell me Sasuke, what do you want to do? Sasuke growled, but then there was another knock. Come in, Naruto said. As Kakashi entered the room, Hello Naruto, enjoying the position of being Hokage? Kakashi asked, as Naruto just frowned. Yeah, I'm enjoying it, Naruto said. So, what do you want Kakashi? As you can see, I'm in the middle of something. Kakashi rubbed the back of his head, as he decided to go straight to the point. Right, sorry about that. When you're done with Sasuke, I would like you to follow me, Hayashi and Inoichi. We have something of importance that we need you to see, Kakashi said. Naruto moved his Hokage hat down as he covered his eyes. As he nod, as Kakashi then left, as Naruto turned back to Sasuke. Sasuke then spoke, I am pissed off Naruto. For so long now I thought, if I kill Itachi and avenge a clan I would be happy. It's quite simple then, said Naruto. Now tell me, who are you pissed off at? Naruto asked. As Sasuke racked his brain, as he then spoke, everyone, Naruto narrowed his eyes. Well, you have to be pissed off at someone. Who? Your family? The village? Me for telling you this? Naruto asked, as Sasuke clenched his teeth tight. I don't know, I don't know. I love my family, I like the village. I am glad that you told me, Sasuke said. So Naruto continued, then you're angry at Itachi, Naruto asked, as Sasuke bite his lower lip, as it started to bleed, as tears started to run down, as Naruto seen the proud Uchiha was on a mental breakdown. I don't know anymore, Sasuke said. Stop lying. Who are you angry at? Naruto asked. Sasuke then rushed forward as he slammed his fist into the wall. I hate myself, he shouted. I betrayed my village just like Itachi did. I became like him in so many ways that I hated. I am confused. Damn it, what should I do? Sasuke asked. Easy, do what I did, said Naruto. As Sasuke turned and looked Naruto in the eyes, as Naruto spoke, I was angry also. I hated the village for treating me like trash. I hated it so much that I thought about killing some of these people. Even when I had Tasumi and the others, I still wanted to lash out at the village, but I forgave the village. I can never forget it though, 
but I won't let it bother me and I moved on. You should do the same, Nard told him, as Sasuke narrowed his eyes at the ground. Is it that easy? He asked. Naruto shook his head, no. You will be in agony over it for a time, but it's for the best. At least trust me on that, as the Hokage, Naruto said. As Sasuke sighed, fine, but I want to see Itachi. One way or another, I am going to get the information out of him. Well, that's nice. However, I need to go, said Naruto, as he turned and went to the door. But he then saw Sasuke beside him. What are you doing, Naruto asked, as Sasuke folded his arms. You told me to stay close to you if I want to see Itachi, so I will, as Naruto then dropped his jaw, as he remember when he tells Sasuke that, as the envoys in the darkness, snicker. All of you, do my paperwork until I return, Naruto said to the Anvu, as they all stop laugh, and Naruto start to laugh now, as he then turned back to Sasuke, normally. I would tell you to not read too much into what I told you, but alright, but just stay here for now until I get back, Naruto said as he left the room. Sasuke narrowed his eyes as he sighed as he sat down on the couch. With the real Naruto, Kushina and Fu, the three of them were on a boat as they were going to Uzu as Fu was reading an advanced book about sealing. Man Fu, you're like a real seal master. Since you're so interested in the art of Fuin Jutsu, Naruto told her, as Fu chuckled and rubbed the back of her head. Is that right? she asked. Yes, you are, said Naruto as he sat down very close to her, making Fu turn red. Fu, you alright? Naruto asked. You look really red. I I'm fine, she said that stutter. Naruto then placed his forehead on hers as he looked into her eyes, as Fu blushed even more and dropped her book. Fu, you're cute when you're blushing, said Naruto. What are you talking about, Fu said, as she turned her face, but Naruto moved closer to her, as he placed an arm on her shoulder, making Fu body stiffen. Well, I have to admit, it's a shock that you like me. The Nadabi has a loud mouth, does she, said Naruto, as Fu froze in surprise. She told you that I like you, Fu said stuttering, as she didn't believe that the Nadabi told on her. As Naruto smiled again, no, you just did, Naruto said. It was just a rumor from the Nadabi, but you confirmed it. I, 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 as she was stuttering, but she then froze when Naruto kissed her. As people around them were talking and pointing at them, they were on a large boat. But Fu didn't mind because Naruto was kissing her. As they then broke the kiss, Naruto, people are watching, Fu said. Don't worry about them. Just concentrate your eyes on mine, Naruto said. As he kissed her again, after a while, they broke the kiss. Wow, Fu said, as Naruto snickered. Sorry if that was sudden, but I want you to know that you mean a lot to me, Fu. So, do I mean a lot to you, Naruto asked. As Fu blushed even deeper, I, I really like you, Naruto. You have taught me so much. You gave me a new life, and for that, yes, you mean a lot to me, she said. All right, you two, said a voice, as Kushina came out from the under deck. It's time to go. Stop the boat, please. As the captain was confused. We're still not our destination. We're going to Kiri. As Kushina shook her head. No, we stop here. You can continue, said Kushina. As both Naruto, Fu and Kushina went at the edge of the boat. Alright guys, prepare to get wet, said Kushina. As she pushed the both of them off into the water and jumped in as well. As she then took the lead and swam forward. As they went under the water and then emerged at a new spot. As she then turned towards them. Alright guys, there is a 12% chance that we might die from the whirlpool. What? said Naruto. As Fu was also starting to get scared as Naruto could see the dangerous whirlpool swearing in the water. Come on, said Kushina as she stood up and activated chakra on her feet as they did the same. Now, I've got a plan to get through the whirlpool, said Kushina as she told them her plan. When she was finished, come on mom, that's not going to work, said Naruto. It is, said Kushina 
Now, let's do it. As chakra chains came from our back and wrapped around our leg, as they tossed him in the air, spinning him around, as Fu held up her hands and Naruto grabbed her hand, as he placed one of his Hiroshin seals on her, as he released Fu, allowing her to fly over the whirlpools. Naruto was then falling, as he held on to the chain, and him and Kushina then vanished, as they arrived where Fu landed. Don't do that again, said Fu, as Kushina chuckled. Come on, we made it, didn't we? said Kushina, as Fu just turned her head at Naruto, who was chuckling, as they then got up and walked towards the village. So, what exactly are we coming here for? Naruto asked. Well, there is a secret scroll book there that is full of all kinds of fubinjutsu. Special that I want you to have, Naruto, said Kushina. Really? Naruto said that smile. Alright, let's get going. As they kept on walking, they then arrived to a broken through wall as they entered. As they saw human bones everywhere, the house destroyed into pieces. Naruto then paused as he looked at all the destruction. Mom, who did this? Naruto asked. Uzu had a lot of enemies that were afraid of us. Such as the Stone Village, the Cloud Village and Kiri were some of them. But those guys are probably the main reason why the Uzumakis are wiped out. Naruto tightened his face as Kushina and Fu could feel Naruto's chakra swirling as Naruto then looked up as he see that rain was going to be falling soon. It's alright he spoke but let's get going. Rain is coming soon. It might be a storm. Naruto also felt his swords as they were shaking as he didn't understand what was going on. As they continued their journey, back with the clone Naruto, as Naruto, Genma, Hayashi, Inuichi, Kakashi, Aizumo and Ketetsu, as they looked down at five bodies, their face were peeled off. When did you say this happened? Naruto asked. About five to six hours ago, Hokage, Genma said. The trail has gone cold, said Hayashi as he already uses Byakon to scan the area. It doesn't matter now. We'll go back to the village and everyone must be on high alert throughout the village gates. I don't know what we're dealing with here, but it isn't good, Naruto told them, making everyone nod. Aizumo Kotetsu, I want you guys to go along with Genma and search around the land of fire. I want you to be back in 24 hours and tell me if you find anything suspicious. As all of them nodded, understood Hokage, as they all went off at top speed. Naruto then snapped his finger as an Anvu appeared beside him, while I rather not cause panic in the village. And the Mizukage is coming soon. I want the security for the village to be stepped up. Report any sightings that you see, Naruto said to him, as the Anvu vanished. Let's go back to the village, Naruto told the others. Damn it boss, the clone said. Please hurry up. Something bad is going to happen here, as they all went back. Back at Orochimaru's base, Kobayashi, Kiba and Hana father sighed as he leaned on the wall. He was in a lower section of the base, watching some people fight, as his dog was right next to him watching the fight as well. As his dog, Ayaka, then transformed into her human form as she leaned against the wall. It was then that someone came down the stairs as Kobayashi narrowed his eyes and looked at the man. He had on a black jacket with some standard Anvu pants. On his back was a medium sized katana that was strapped down as he walked by Kobayashi. Who the hell are you? Kobayashi asked as he's never seen the man before. But the man ignored him as Kobayashi eye twitched as he grabbed the man's shoulder. Do not ignore but Kobayashi was slammed into the wall as the man moved his hand. Don't touch me with your filthy hand immortal. As Kobayashi shakily stood to his feet. So what? Let me guess. You think you're God or something? Calling me a mortal. The man looked up at the ceiling. You are not important. The only important thing is, is what I want here. And when I find it, I will leave. So what are you looking for? Kobayashi asked. 
I am looking for my swords, the man said. Kind of stupid, wasting your time with swords since you have one on your back, Kobayashi said. As the man got a disgust look on his face, mentioning of the sword on his back, this human metal is pathetic compared to the swords I used to wield. Not even the greatest masters can possess the power of the swords that I seek. As Kobayashi was now interested, well, no swords like that are here, so tell me who you are. You obviously have the attitude like a Uchiha. Well, at least the way I remember them, said Kobayashi. And I already told you, you're not important. So there is nothing more to tell you, the man said. Now be gone from my presence. Kobayashi eyebrow twitch as he dropped on all fours as he growled. Gietsuga! As everyone watched Kobayashi spiral at the mysterious man. The man simply closed his eyes. Am I too fast for you, Kobayashi said. As the man simply sidestepped Kobayashi, as Ayuka, eyes widened. Upon seeing the man incredible speed, as he grabbed the spinning Kobayashi and lift him up with one hand, as he slammed Kobayashi into the ground, he then pulled his sword at a quick motion as he placed it at Kobayashi's neck. As Kobayashi stuck, as he knew if he moved, the man can burst his neck with one swipe. Try that again and I'll kill you. Mortals should know their place, the man said. As Kobayashi growled, Kobayashi started to reach in his pocket for something, but the man slammed his feet into Kobayashi's stomach. Now then, who is your leader, the man asked, as Kobayashi snickered. Screw you, Kobayashi said. The man closed his eyes as he brought up his feet and kicked Kobayashi straight into the wall, creating a huge dent. Well, whatever. When I envelop this place in darkness, I will make you my own personal slave before I kill you, the man said. Screw you, bastard, said Kobayashi, as the man appeared in front of him and backhanded him away as Kobayashi's face was planted in the ground. Don't speak to your new master that way. And that is Master Sato to you. Ayaka then ran to Kobayashi and tried to help him up. Are you alright Kobayashi? She asked as Kobayashi steadily stood to his feet as he wiped away the blood from his mouth. Damn, that bastard hit hard. I should have gone to my curse mark too and kicked his ass. Nonetheless, he hit hard and he smells of blood. He's killed someone recently, but whatever, that's it. I am going to ask Kabuto for the vial of the curse mark Sage Tree. With that, I might even gain the power of a cage and no one will be able to beat me and I'll murder that guy. Sato was it? I'll tell him back his name when he's under my boot, said Kobayashi. It was then a blue ear woman came with him. You got your ass kicked, Kobayashi, she asked. Shut the hell up, Guren. As he then turned around, Kabuto, where the hell are you, he wondered. Back at Uzu. Kushina brought Naruto and Fu to a small vault under a giant, destroyed mansion. It was quite a long way down, but they finally made it as Kushina arrived and she closed her eyes. On the door, it had five seals, each representing a rank of Fuin Jutsu. There is the beginner, adept, the experience, mentor, and master. Each of the seals was made with some of the steps not in there and you must fill out the seals correctly. So far only two people has gotten this right, Mito and myself, said Kushina as Naruto Green. Well there's about to be four in that group, right Fu? Naruto said as Fu nodded. Alright then, we can start. I will take out the easy one for you, Kushina said as she looked at the top wall. Stored seal, it said. As Kushina looked over the seal, she took out an ink pen and drew on the thing in front of her. It was then the door to the vault slightly opened when she finished. The seal was correct that she wrote. Your turn, guys, Kushina told them, making Naruto and Fu nod. Alright. Fu, why don't you go first? Naruto asked. As Fu nodded as she walked up to the seal and looked over it. Explosive seal, it said. Fu then drew in the missing pieces. 
Done, she said. As the seal start to glow and the door open up more. Nice, said Naruto. Now it's my turn. As Naruto read his. Seal of fire techniques. Naruto quickly draw down the pieces that were missing and the door open even more. As Fu then took the other seal. As Fu quickly draw the next seal completely. As the door was almost open. Excellent, said Kushina. One more and that book is ours. Naruto then walked forward. As he looked at the wall, but it was blank. As he narrowed his eyes to look everywhere, but there was nothing there. There is nothing on the wall, mom. What am I supposed to do? Naruto asked. But Kushina continued to smile and she didn't say anything. As Naruto sighed as he turned around, the wall was blank. What was he supposed to write? As Naruto started to rack his brain, as time passed, it has been over an hour now, but Naruto still had no idea what to do. Kushina then walked forward as she patted him on the shoulder. Calm down Naruto, but I'll give you a hint. So, what are you? She asked. Naruto raised an eyebrow. What am I? Well, he was a lot of things. He was a shinobi, a jinjulki, the Hokage of Konoha. He was a Jonin. There were so many things that he were. So what could they be? Naruto closed his eyes as he thought it over. As his eyes snapped back open. I know. I'm a Uzumaki. As Naruto then write down a Uzumaki, Fuin Jutsu seal on a paper. As he wrote the kanji for his last name. As he slammed it on the seal wall. As he started to glow and the door finally opened fully. As they walked in and everything cleared away. As Naruto saw a small pedestal, on it there was a book. As he said, Uzumaki Fuin Jutsu, hidden scroll of sealing. Naruto then picked the book up as a note fell out and he picked it up. Dear Uzumaki clansman, the note said, you have proven yourself worthy to carry the Uzumaki name. We are the proud clan of Fuin Jutsu. All the things that made the world fear us is in this book. Use this book. To build back the Uzumaki clan, keep your head held high and never take your power for granted. Unite all the Uzumakis and make sure they know the power of the Uzumaki. As Naruto then turned around, a smile on his face. We did it you guys. As the both of them smile as well. As they all went up back to the mansion. As it wasn't so destroyed so they could stay for the night. They will return back to Konoha tomorrow. As Kushina told them that she was tired. So she went and picked one of the rooms. That wasn't looking that bad. It was then that thunder was loud outside. Making Fu grab onto Naruto's jacket as she hide her face. You alright? Naruto asked. But Fu was shaking. Are you scared of lightning and thunder? Naruto asked. As Fu gulped. A bit, she said. As Naruto chuckled. It's not funny, she said, as the both of them then went up to one of the rooms. As Naruto dusted off the bed that was in there, as he sat down, Fu then went over as she took up her bag, as she walked out not saying anything. Did I do something? Naruto wondered. About 10 minutes later, Fu came back, as she was wearing a green kimono with a flower in her hair and a box in her hand. Fu, said Naruto. As Fu kneeled in front of him, Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, I Fu, want to officially join your clan. I appreciate everything that you've done for me, the kindness, the teaching and the love. I promise to use my gifts and my talents, all for the Uzumaki clan. As for my loyalty, I present you with this, Fu said, as she pushed the small box forward to Naruto. Naruto gratefully accepted the box as he opened it. Inside the box was a scroll as Naruto rolled it out and there was a seal as he unsealed what was in the scroll and a jewel kunai came out as it had sapphires and plenty other rubies and diamonds all over it. As Fu then spoke, I found it during my travels. It was my most prized possession and I would like you to have it Naruto. Thank you Fu. And welcome to the Uzumaki Namikaze clan, Naruto said, 
as Fu nodded with a smile. It was then that the thunder hit heavy as Fu jumped as Naruto caught her. As the both of them dropped on the bed, Easy Fu, you're alright, Naruto said. As she then slowly got up, she then went towards the door as she took out an ink brush and started to draw on the door as she ran through hand sign as she activated a privacy seal. Why did you do that? Naruto asked. Fu then slowly started to take off her green kimono, shocking Naruto. Fu, are you sure that you're ready for something like this? Naruto, the time that I've spent with you, I never feel this way about someone before. And I want you to be that person that I'd be with forever, Fu said. As she was left in nothing but her underwear, as she slowly, seductively walked up to him, making her to gulp. As he realized that he never focused on Fu this much before. As she hopped on the bed and the both of them started to make out furiously. As she then pulled back, I love you Naruto she said. I love you too he said that smile. A couple of hours later, both Naruto and Fu fall back on the bed as Fu was huffing and puffing. Five times she said as her body was shaking while Naruto still seemed like he was ready for another round. Naruto, are you okay? Fu asked him. Yeah, fine, said Naruto. More than fine, I feel wonderful, he said, as Fu smiled, as she then curled up in Naruto's arms. I guess you have more stamina than me, she said, as Naruto chuckled. A few hours later, Naruto opened his eyes and realized how dark it was, as he got her from the bed and realized Fu was still sleeping soundly. As he got dressed and walked out of the house, he strapped his swords to his back as he watched them hum even more. As he didn't know why, but something was just calling out to him when mainly the swords as he went into the forest of Ozu. About 30 minutes later, Naruto arrived at the water shore as the water was behaving violently as rain was pouring down from the sky. I really hope that this isn't stupid, said Naruto. As he summoned about 30 clones, they all grabbed each other's legs and grabbed Naruto as they sent him high up into the air, as Naruto was sent towards the whirlpool. As he held out his hand and a Rasengan form, he quickly dashed down as he slammed the Rasengan into the dangerous waters. As the Rasengan hit and Naruto traveled through the water at a fast pace as he was going down. As Naruto looked up, the whirlpool was all around him just because of Rasengan he managed to get in. As he felt, the water pressure started to get dangerous below. As he quickly summoned another Shadow Clone, the Shadow Clone grabbed his leg and swing him as he was sent deeper into the water. As Naruto then saw a sword shining in the water. So that's it, said Naruto as he swam down fast as he grabbed the sword hilt and pulled it out of the water. As he looked at the blue, beautiful sword, Naruto then summoned five clones as they all grabbed him and threw him up to the surface as Naruto raised the water sword and cut right through the whirlpool. As he was now in mid-air, he summoned a clone as the clone grabbed him and threw him down to the surface. As Naruto dropped on the ground, he then heard a voice, please. It's coming soon. No, it's already here. It will bring a lot of death and destruction. He will end everyone. Watch out for him, the voice said. As Naruto turned around, but no one was there. As Naruto had no idea what the hell said that. As he looked at his new sword, the embodiment of water. But guys, I'm gonna be ending this episode right here. If you want to see the next part of this, you already know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification as they post it. Remember to share this to all of your friends on the social media platform. But for now, I'm out of here. Peace.